What is going on, guys? It's Money Bags McPhee here with uh, Mr. Navionics, Matt Whittle himself. We're doing a little intro to uh, to Navionics Google Earth. Just wanted to let you guys know we're going to be doing a giveaway. Remember to like, subscribe, the goose on make, and comment on the video, yep. and we'll get you in a drawing for this nice Outcast pencil, two and a quarter ounce, like a pink mackerel color here. I've got the same plug. Love Fine. it. Cast like a mile. Nice high quality hooks and hardware there. Um, so just remember to follow it all the way to the end, guys. We're gonna get into uh, how we find a lot of our inshore freshwater spots. Um, I am always on Google Earth. There's always a window open on one of the computers. 24 seven. It's on some pond, it's on some inlet, always. Um, so this is how we kind of break down how we find spots and even just um, isolating like the honey holes inside of the spots that we find. Um, so we've got Google Earth open right here. Uh, let's just, uh, I don't know, zoom in. I'm not Mr. Uh, MacBook. I, I got, I got, I got I, Somebody's got to be good with the computers around All here. All right, here we go. Boom. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh. Oh, man, hold on. <laughs> so we go. This is here what he gets for talking. This is... We got it. Ba Boom. All right. So I know we're always going to get roasted for something, always, but, uh, well-known Big Cliff, Nickerson State Park here. Everybody's out here trout fishing, including myself after work whenever we can. Every day. And this is also a great display of that structure that we're going to find in the pond. Uh, and for all our locals here, we're going to kind of focus around like the Big Cliff, Little Cliff area. Um, so we're going to continue down the road like we're going to Flax and just continue down. Um, as we can see, like right in front of the beach at the boat ramp area there, we got a massive sandbar. Um, so we can see the white sandy bottom mm -hmm. just from uh, not even in zooming in that much and we're seeing a clear defined drop off uh, Kind of uh, farther out past the beach there So that's definitely a, a serious amount of structure that I'm going to target uh, a little bit of it is probably a little bit out of casting range from the bank but as we follow it along the, the line there, it's going to move in a little bit closer so uh, that's going to be well within casting distance of our shore anglers here. So if you don't have the canoe, kayak, this is going to be massively valuable information for you. Yeah, and especially fishing now, uh, this time of year, make sure you got some nice warm waders. Because mm. as soon as you go up, like, above your knees, it gets cold very quick. Very quick. So, so. layer up, triple socks if you have yeah. to, hand warmers on hand warmers, yeah. you know, what the heck not. Sweatpants, jeans, whatever you have, just throw it on. Yep. Even some of the buffs will keep the wind from getting down your back here. So that's that's definitely critical. You gotta be dressing appropriate for the weather, you know? So that's, uh, you know, we got a nice little honey hole down here too. But basically we're just looking for um, that contour line, you know? And that's, uh, that's pretty extreme there. Um, I would kind of take the same outlooks as far as looking for salt water stuff. It's gonna be a little bit different. Um, but you're looking for the same contour lines and drop-offs. You're going to see the darker, deeper water. Yeah, for me, it's looking for the drop-offs and also looking for, like, rock piles. Mm. Um, especially saltwater fishing as, at night, uh, especially for striped bass. I like to fish a lot around, like, rock piles and kind of, like, boulder fields. So that's the first thing I'm, I'm looking for on Google Maps is lots of structure. Yeah, I mean, we call them stripers. A lot of people call them rockfish for a reason. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, look for those boulder piles, any kind of structure that can hold up against tight. Definitely pay well, off. Yeah. Um, if you want to find us. Let's find us a juicy spot. Yeah, we're trying not to, to roast anybody, um, but we got to demonstrate with something, you know? All right, let's see what we got, let's see what we got. Oh man. Zooming oh, out. Zooming out. I mean, these are a lot of, uh, a lot of Google Earth and Navionics apps as far as following like bottom contours, but also, um, you know, a lot of these spots, like they might be a 15 minute walk out. If I didn't have Google Earth to scope it ahead of time, I maybe not make that hike, you know? So knowing what you're getting out to without having to go search it sometimes can um, save you a lot of headache and a lot of time. Yeah, so here we have the Nubble. Oh. Uh, this is a inlet I fished uh, a little bit this year. Uh, what first attracted me to it is, as you can see, when you zoom in a little bit, a lot of rocks are around here. So at night, incoming tide, a lot of those fish kind of stack up in this kind of area. And um, yeah, just, just fishing 
like rock piles. Um, it doesn't really drop off a lot here, and so it's kind of shallow. So um, yeah, I would fish this. Uh, lots of like salt plastics, like ounce, ounce and a half jig head, like a nice long eel kind of plastic uh, at night, slow retrieve. And there's not too many rocks uh, out far, so I would just like drag it on the bottom. And that's usually when I would get uh, most of my bites. Yeah, so I'm just gonna look at this like I would look at any of the uh, the spots that I would fish. So Matt was talking about fishing this rock kind of boulder field here on incoming. I would also like to kind of put myself on the outfacing, on the outflow, because um, there's gonna be a serious amount of ebb in this little cove area. You can see how it sucks in there. Yeah. Um, and that calm water is what a lot of the stripers are going to stage up in to kind of stem the tide and just wait for the bait fish that are going to be flushing by here. Um, like me and Matt, we're mostly night fishermen, so they're definitely going to be more prone to come in in the shallow waters and those boulder fields at night. Um, so it's just not a matter of casting out as far as you possibly can. My theory with uh, stripers in general is people cast over a lot of fish. Everybody's looking for a longer rod, bigger rod to cast farther, and a lot of times they're right at your feet. So um, you don't need to send it a mile, you know? Yeah, it's not needed. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Especially at night, because those fish come in super, super close, especially in the surf. Those fish are probably 20 feet out in front of you. Yeah. So. I can't remember how many times, like, you think the cast is over, and it's not over. It's not <laughs> over till the lure's out of the water. So uh, they, they, they'll bite it right at your feet. Whoop, yeah. whoop. And then also in coming inside here, we've, we've kind of focused on the, the rocky point there, but we can see these little channels back here. So if you wanted to, um, maybe this is more protected, the wind would be at your back being over here. Um, this is a solid little channel there coming in past this little like sand kind of uh, grass flat and all these little island areas. They would definitely funnel in close to the beach, mm -hmm. stay in that channel and kind of flush into this back harbor area. Um, you know, you're just, it doesn't necessarily need to be massively deep. It just needs to be deeper than the surrounding water. Yeah. You know, and they're definitely going to just hold right in that channel. It pushes really close in here. Um, and I would be fishing this the same way that I'd be fishing the, the, the nubble over here. <laughs> um, it's just a little bit more sandy beach presentation. Um, maybe using something a little bit shallower running. Needlefish or a smaller bucktail is probably something I would choose to fish that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Huh. Um, but there's lots of areas, and I would kind of decide, you know, dissect them all the same. You know, um, the tide that you're going to be fishing them for, where you're going to be staged up for, would uh, all prep is going to help you catch more fish when you get out there. Pretty much. Hmm. All right, so uh, what questions do we have for the people? Yeah, what we got from our uh, admiring public? We got some interesting ones. I'll oh, man, that. I'm ready. <sighs> Someone said, thank you. I need a new striper spot. Well, um, you got a lot of them out there, so you just got to go on Google Maps, yeah. do your research, and try on error. Yep. That's yeah, I mean, is. we try, uh, I probably try 10 to 15 new spots every yep. year. Um, it's cool to change it up. Everybody's got like their, uh, their honey holes that they count on, but just going to new waters, maybe taking a little road trip is fun, you know? Yeah, there's no better feeling than going to a new spot and slamming fish and not telling a single person. Yeah. <laughs> How do you figure out terrain and where drop-offs are? And could you show an example? Oh yeah, man, well, definitely. let's pull up some Navionics on them. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm Dr. Google Earth. This is Dr. Navionics. So, uh. We both have our, uh, All right. the things we're pros at. Let's pull up full screen. Yep. Let's zoom it in. But bottom contours are, are uh, very critical. You know, the, the steeper the drop-offs, the closer the lines are gonna be, and they're gonna um, put the foot depth on the on the app anyway, yeah. so. So I am from Atlantic City, New Jersey, and I fish this area a lot. So you're looking for drop-offs, um, very steep drop-offs. Uh, that's where the fish hang out, especially at night, and they ambush smaller fish. Um, so there's a lot of jetties that I'd fish. So usually I would um, I would fish around this area a lot. So there's about nine, 10 jetties in this whole line. So I would fish one for about 20, 30 minutes, and I'd hop to the next one. 
I had to finish in one and I hop in the next one. And then um, by the third or fourth one, if there's no fish there, there probably aren't any fish at the other ones, but you still gotta try it. Um, but yeah, using Navionics is uh, very useful. Or well, just any kind of service you see. But, ooh, kind of zoomed out a little bit. Where'd you go? All right, here we go. So you see how at the end of this inlet, this side is like super shallow, a couple feet. And then the other side, kind of the inlet side is about mm, 20, 30 foot of water. Mm. Yeah. So a lot of guys would fish this side at night, which is cool, but almost nobody fishes the inlet side because it's faster current, it's deeper water. People don't have uh, big enough rods to throw bigger lures. But if you have uh, like a bigger rod to throw bigger lures and they get down to the bottom, very productive and a lot bigger fish. Much bigger fish. And like how Matt was saying, um, sometimes he would go and fish a couple of jetties, the fish aren't there. It's always good to have a backup B plant spot. Yeah. Probably something within a close enough distance because um, let's just say Matt was fishing outgoing tide here. He's probably got six hours of total tide. Probably four hours of that is um, going to produce a solid amount of fish. So if he gives it each jetty 20 minutes, he's fished that area for two hours. He's confident um, that he, they're not there in abundance. So he's going to switch it up, maybe take a little five minute commute and still get two hours more of tide to fish, you know? Any holdover tips and trying to find those spots using? So obviously we're fishing like open water here. Um, this is like, you know, a bay outlet to, uh, to just the ocean. I would basically, when I'm looking for a holdover fish, I'm looking for the exact opposite. So I'm going way, way, way back Ooh. in marshes um, where those little chubs and little small bait fish are still going to be somewhat yeah. kind of active. Um, but yeah, way back in some yeah. marshy, like all, all these kind of yep. back creek areas where the water is a little bit warmer yep. than it is out front. Um, a ton of those fish stack up on bait, or they're they're just hanging out because the water's warmer and. Yeah, I would look also um, for you know the back of these marshes that would lead into our herring run ponds. Yeah. So any salt marsh situation where you're gonna have um, those early season like alewives or herring run. Um, a lot of those little bait fish or like we said chubs would still be in that area they'll probably be pretty dormant they're not going to be the same stripers you're going to catch in 65 70 degree temperatures yeah. in the summertime um, I would try to avoid using any hooks uh, that aren't singles you know small bucktails if you're going to target these fish because we do want to get a good survival rate I want to release them to be healthy um, and it can kind of put a number on these fish, you know, catch them with an SP, fish them really aggressive. They're, you know, they're just going slow and low, you know. So be easy to them. <laughs> yeah, especially this time of year. How to find good rock piles for tog. Oh, shore. man. All right, here Whoa. we go. Here we go. Well, I, 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 can't, can I can't make this too long. Mm. So we'll have a tog episode later on. But So uh, let's take a the, the Google map. So I like to fish a lot of like breakwaters. So here we go. There should be, we're just gonna take you outside of Massachusetts. We're gonna go to Connecticut. So if you're from Connecticut, sorry, I'm blowing your, your spot up, but uh, we're just gonna take you out here. So is there a particular, particular breakwater? Am I, yeah, here we go. So there's a series of three breakwaters in New Haven that I've fished that produce a lot of fish. And I've only found out about them because of Google Maps. Um, a lot of my tog fishing actually is at near or around breakwaters or rock piles. So if you see, you got a lot of these holes, like 28, 22, 24, 23 feet. Um, so I pretty much just double anchor up and I just pick a hole. And usually if there's fish there, they'll show up at about five or 10 minutes. And then what's cool about these is you got a long stretch of rocks. So you can post up one spot, no fish, post up, no fish, until you find them, and then you're on them. And then it's game over. It's yeah. Drop and reel. So, yep. Focus. Like I said, don't go fishing, go fish hunting. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, focus on breakwaters, jetties, 
rock piles, wrecks, whatever. Yeah, normal suspects for tog spots. You know. yeah, but use Google Maps and Navionics to your advantage because it's out there. It's free. Yep. So you have no excuse not to use it. Yeah. Yeah, it's only going to help you. Like I said, it's free, easy to use. Um, it'll save you a lot of time. Well, ladies and gents, this has been Money Bags Me Pete here with Matt. Uh, I just want to let you know before we get out of here, we're doing a lure giveaway. We got an Outcast pencil. I've got this. It's two and, two and a quarter ounce? 2.25. Two 2.25. I've got this in the macro myself. Beautiful lure, great high quality hooks. All you got to do is like and uh, comment on the video and subscribe and we'll uh, we'll get you in the drawing for this bad larry real nice plug 30 dollars for free 30 bucks Come on. this thing will send it have a great day guys bye peace